India's market news headquarters. Cutting edge analysis. Influential insights. Market moving intelligence. Broadcasting live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswald Studios in Mumbai. Good morning. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Bazaar Morning Call. Middle of the week, it's a Wednesday morning. Nice and nippy here, this uh, 8 o'clock Mumbai time. We're coming to you live from the CNBC TV 18 Multi Rosewell Studios. I'm Prashant with me, my colleague Surabhi and Nigel. Guys, hi, good morning. Is that nice and nippy? I'm thinking <laughs> cupcakes and coffee. <laughs> Prashant, should we look at you? <laughs> you know, this, is, uh, this is the most I get out of, of winter, right? I mean, so called winter. And you know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. We are former this, Delhiites, so we know we Although Delhi takes. doesn't have too much of a winter to speak of now, right? The but it's starting apparently with a major cold wave that's about to you know, uh, yeah? set in in the next couple of days over there. We're nice and nippy, not complaining. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. For Bombay standards, pretty good. But yeah. we've got a market to address. So let's get straight to that. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, uh, so last night, Q is not very much to really take home one way or the other. And uh, like slightly sideways. I mean, actually, the U.S. market consolidated for the most part of the day. And then towards the end, dipped into the red. I mean, the change is up on your screen. S&P down about a third of a percent. NASDAQ down about a quarter percent or so. Uh, you got the 10 year, the US 10 year yield, which was up two base, everything small. I mean, two basis points up, dollar index absolutely flat, 106.34. Uh, there were specific moves in tech names like NVIDIA, Google, et cetera, but that's later. Some data the NFIB, Small Business Optimum in, uh, Optimism Index, rose to its highest reading since June of 2021. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, the, the, there's one thing which I think uh, small businesses are excited about or uh, you know, Trump has been kind of sort of signaling that he's going to help his small businesses. So optimism in terms of this indicator, uh, the highest since the 20, June 2021. The other data point, of course, is going to be later, which is the US CPI. Uh, again, as, I, as we telegraphed earlier this week, it's expected to be elevated, sticky, etc. So not very much uh, in terms of big cues. We'll see, though. Oil prices uh, unchanged, but small down to about $72 a barrel there was, of course, Trump on Truth Social, that social media platform also uh, saying that, well, you know, invest more than a billion dollars in the U.S. and all hurdles will go away. We'll talk more about that later. Just to circle back and tie in the level since uh, it's, uh, there's not very much dramatically different. So, as I said yesterday, both the Nifty and the Nifty Bank by uh, the end uh, and actually through the course of the day uh, traded above the hourly averages, the 40 hourly averages. And we ended above it. Actually, if anything, towards the end, there was a sharp ramp up and the Nifty ended absolutely flat. There was nothing to show on the downside for both indices. So the Nifty support level comes in at 24,534. Uh, this is the nearest level uh, that uh, we are looking at. The swing low from a few days back is uh, 24,295. And many are quoting that. And that is also important, but let's take it step by step. Because if the 22, uh, 24,295, and I think we had Jay Bala yesterday in the afternoon also making that point, that if you tr start to trade below it, then perhaps uh, you've got to start to question whether this move up is over. But we're not there yet. In the near term, of course, the Nifty on the upside needs to cross 24,857. Uh, similarly, for the Nifty Bank, it needs to cross its recent high of 53,888. Uh, and uh, you know, it's not very far away from where we left off. And of course, support here comes in at about 53,160. Gift Nifty will come up on your screen indicating how we are likely to start. It's absolutely flat. I think you know, uh, befits the kind of uh, handover that we got from Wall Street. Uh, absolutely. And uh, perhaps why the gift nifty is slightly lower, the implied open is lower, mm. is because all markets in Asia are actually red. Mm. Barring two markets, which are very excited, which is China and Hong Kong. I'll get to that in just a bit. But otherwise, whether you're looking at Australia, you're looking at uh, the Nikkei in Japan or Singapore, most of the regional markets are following that handover, that weak handover from Wall Street and starting off cautious. So why is China excited? Because today... Uh, it's all eyes on China. This conference, economic, uh, uh, you know, work conference, this is supposed to kick off. And the tone was set after that uh, press release that came out uh, after the Politburo meeting, where the expectation was there'll be more fiscal stimulus and there will be, quote-unquote, loser monetary policy and unconventional counter-cyclical measures that will be announced. Let's see if that actually comes through. It's enough to keep the equity market excited, for sure, which is why we'll watch out for some of the metal stocks here. If there's a, you know, short-term trade, you know, intraday, uh, in anticipation of any news from China. On uh, the US, just to put the number on, on the table, the consumer price inflation data that will come out, the expectation is that 
the increase is going to be 2.7% at the headline level and about 3.3% at the core level. So let's see if those numbers are in sync. Interestingly, by the way, while Wall Street fell yesterday, including the Nasdaq, Alphabet was very, very interesting. And it's always some big tech name that will uh, you know, take the market's attention. And yesterday, the reason that was happening was because Google is now, uh, you know, announced a new uh, chip. It's a new chip in quantum computing. It's called Willow. The market got really excited about the potential considering that it is uh, cutting-edge technology over there. So just thought I'll mention that while the overall market was, of course, down. Coming to flows here, uh, we had a nice buy figure from the FIIs, just about 1,300 crores on the FII side. So that was good news. Uh, domestic institutions were also chipping in yesterday. Not a very big buy figure, but still 600 crores. So from the flows positioning, no problem. Institutions were on the buying side yesterday. In terms of uh, some action today, apart from all the stocks and news that we'll track, Vishal Megamart, that's a name that uh, people in the north would be very, very familiar with, of course. Uh, the IPO is opening out. It's an OFS. They're looking to raise about 8,000 crores. We'll tell you more about this company and we'll get chatting with the management as well as uh, we roll along in today's uh, edition of the show. So watch out for this. Last but not the least, another development uh, and one that talks about the evolution of our capital markets. The T plus zero cycle is going to kick off. It's optional. You don't have to you know, offer uh, same day settlement. But this is what the regulator has been talking about to even consider perhaps at some point instantaneous settlements, whether our market infrastructure can move towards that. This comes in from the 31st of January. It will be rolled out in a staggered manner. And what's interesting is that the brokers that are going to be eligible, they can offer different brokerages. So if you want T plus zero, maybe you want to pay a little more brokerage. If you're looking at T plus one, you're patient, then maybe you pay a little less. Let's see how brokers react to this. But in any case, I mean, the capital market part of the you know, the, the uh, equity market has been so active. So watch out for a lot of the broking stocks and the wealth management stocks that had a great run even yesterday, Nigel. Well, that's right. And, you know, good to see that the flows picture at least is getting yeah. settled out. Domestic flows are good and the FIs, they're not selling at least. So, you know, that's pretty good news. What about what do they do in the FNO market? Today? Well, on index futures, they added some mild shots. And in fact, in terms of long position, there was some unwinding. So the swing factor out there is close to around 10,000 contracts or thereabouts, you know, because the longs were down, the shots were up, they remain net short at close to around 57% of the positions on the short side. But if you pull up a chart, after five sessions, they actually added net short positions. Otherwise, it was just going one way, right? They were just, you know, it was moving down. Now they've added short positions again. So there was long unbinding, there was covering of shots. And now, after a while, you're seeing close to 9,000 contracts that have been added on the short side. The clients, they're doing the opposite, and that's been the trend consistently they have been adding long positions, net long positions, mildly moving up. A few sessions ago, it was at around one and a half lakh contracts, so they're moving back in that direction. It's playing according to script, right? Now, because the FIs are getting some shots in the system, which is not a bad thing, and the clients, well, they are buying into this uh, small dip that we've seen in the last few sessions. Moving to the options data, then we have two strikes that are fairly active, 24,600 call, 28 lakh shares getting added there and the 24,700 call as well. Since there's a lot of addition on the call side, that's where you've seen that the PCR has cooled down. You know, it was at around 1.2, 1.25 watt. That's cooled down to around 0.85 or thereabouts because the call writing has been rather aggressive. So some of these call writers, in case we get some positive news, well, they'll get stumped on the wrong side and these contracts expire tomorrow itself. Which brings us to the levels. You know, yesterday's low we had mentioned that maybe at around 24,500, that's the point I made yesterday morning, that maybe risk reward could favor you at that level. And it bounced off uh, there. The 50 DMA comes in in that vicinity of around 24,500 or thereabouts. So 24,450, 24,500, extremely important on the downside. Well, on the upside, the resistance level you're looking at is 24,750, which is around the 100 DMA. On the Nifty Bank, we've seen the recent high, recent low. They become the important level. So that's the broad range you're looking at. Stocks that I'm looking at, well, I'm looking at Samvada, Samvadana Madhusan. Because in yesterday's trading session, it conquered two levels, the 20 as well as the 200 DMA in yesterday's trading session. It ended around there, which is important. We saw a fair bit of delivery-based buying in the last few sessions, and there is some mile long addition as well. So the stock, remember, has corrected a goodish bit from the recent high. It's still down 20% from the peak. But yesterday, it showed signs that you know the street uh, is seeing some kind of strength out there with those technical levels uh, getting taken out. So let's see how this goes. Right, uh, <clears throat> Nigel, thank you very much uh, for that. So that's uh, the setup as we are seeing it. Pa Pascal, uh, Lakshmi,